Hey, I put it this. We have just done the school run. I didn't film that part because I'd probably be arrested. I'm going to deliver those steaks and those bean poles. We're in suburbia this morning. Look at the state of those trees. Uh, they plant these trees, surround them in concrete, and wonder why they don't grow. Oh, that's just neither use nor ornament. See you in the van. Ready for the road trip. An interesting subject I was thinking about earlier was what gets you into woodland work? What led you down the woodland route? Almost there with our first drop. This is in Hinkley. On to the next. Ah, so that was Andy. He's all sorted and he's got his 50 beam poles. We're off now to Northampton. We need some electricery as well on our phone. I grew up in a little village called Overseal and spent most of my youth in a country village really, next to a dairy farm, so outdoor life was always just part of my upbringing, across the fields, on your bike, all that kind of outdoor goodness. But when I left school I got no idea at all of what I should do for work. No idea at all. So I just went where there was money so I could pay for my motorbike and pay for my first car. I used to reline brake shoes on lorries. Then I went to work in a bakery. I had a spell at a building yard for a while. I did a spot of window cleaning. But it all changed when I went to Scotland. We went on holiday to a place called Dumfries in Galloway. It's very much a forestry commission style woodlanding area. Plantation woodland, lots of softwoods. And we used to go for all these woodland walks, and honestly, we both loved it. And I just thought to myself, if ever there was a job as a woodland ranger, that'd be fantastic. And this somewhere just here should be drop number two. Dave and the Hedging Sticks. This is like paradise, isn't it? I've talked about woodland paradise, but this is wood paradise. Huge lime trees. They're absolutely colossal, some of these are. You've got to love a lime tree avenue. Yeah, where are we going? Anywhere up here. Just pull up a little bit more, yeah, we'll dump them there, yeah. There's a lot of far wood in that. What do you think? Because that looks very knotty to me. Well, some of it is. I mean, that would go. Yeah, okay. You'd be able to use that. Right. Um, and it's about that diameter you go for, is it? Well, about that, that and a bit, a bit less. Yeah, about an inch? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. All of that will get a binder across the top to hold it all together. Tidy job that, very nice.
working with some great customers. But then we had a few changes. Karen's health took a turn for the worst. Then we realised we are going to be parents. I'd always fancied having a bit of land of my own, trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient. I happened to be going to a job one day in a garden and drove past where our woodland is and it was up for sale. Crunched a few numbers and realised we could get five acres. That was just over 11 years ago. Gradually I started researching about what am I going to do with the woodland. And I wanted to do something that was more traditional. I didn't want what I'd learned in forestry, which was all about high forest. I wanted to try and use the wood on a more sustainable, progressional basis. And that's what led me back into the coppice room, really. I didn't explore coppice as much as I should have done when I was at college. But now having our own five acre woodland, it was an opportunity to start and explore that and straight away for the very first winter I cut my first hazel coppice I cut some ash coppice as well which in the ash dieback that's not done very well but explored various aspects of marketing and so that's where it's led us to where I am now really um, no one's given me any real formal training a lot of it's down to watching videos going to a few training days I learned how to make charcoal I learned how to cut and split hazel for riving and hazel panels. Me and my dad being in the joinery industry all his life, you tend to pick up, you know how to use a chisel, you know how to use a hammer. Doing construction in God, you learn about the construction processes. You know, what works, what doesn't. And that's just a little bit about me and my entry into the woodland scene. By all means, let me know what got you interested in woodland work. So if you're able to, why not pick a career in the woodlands? And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.